hello there kitties, I'm Karin, the vacuum tube witch, long time no see. And today I've got a device for a teardown. Let's see what this mystery box is. We'll be going full speed ahead. <laughs> With a lighting controller from a yacht or, or some other ship. Made by Aqua Signal. And I will be taking this thing apart. Let's see what's inside. To the bench. We are now at the bench. Watch your eyes. The light is now coming back. And by the way, I've got a different camera for the bench. Because I kept having the Razer Kio Pro shenanigans with the camera feed uh, failing over time sometimes uh, it was a very random time I got the regular Razer Kio and we'll see how good it's gonna be so I am now Taking this loveliness apart. Taking the front panel away. And lifting the front panel reveals a discombobulated mess of cables. With uh, a prominent uh, main or emergency power supply switch in the central position indicator LEDs, fuse holders, switches, and uh, some momentary or, or uh, bistable uh, switches uh, on the sides. Those switches, they look very nice. A thing of beauty and a joy forever. I think I will be doing a teardown of one such switch. If we take a closer look at, at those uh, cables, we can uh, see that uh, they are insulated with some nice rubber. Some of those connections were modified and soldered together. Insulated with some rubber, rubber piece of tubing. So let's take a deeper look. A little bit deeper. There are connectors right here. Connectors that go to the printed circuit boards on the opposite side. A ribbon connector. And now I can take those PCBs away. And oh my goodness, look at those beautiful connectors here. With matching gold plated connectors on the boards. Look at those boards. One of them uh, has the main power supply on it, the large uh, main transformer that has dual 18 volts uh, windings. And uh, both of those... Uh, oh, is this a Rifa cap? <laughs> <coughs> if this is Rifa, then it goes to my cha test chamber. 
Look at those birds. The other one has a lot of logic on it. You will learn 2003. The driver tip. MC 14094. Uh, that's pretty nice, but if you if you take a closer look, it's all greenish, conformally coated. Look at those traces. Thing of beauty, joy forever. Here uh, we can see some discoloration from heat. And this is the... I think it might be... What is this anyway? DDI... 2030, so it might be an audio amplifier. So uh, when it was uh, heating up, uh, that's where the discoloration on the board comes from. Let's take a second board. We've got three full bit rectifiers. <laughs> and a filter cap, an inductor. Something marked PS25 that looks more like a Either an inductor or a uh, current transformer. Oh no! It's a buzzer! <laughs> Curious. It's a buzzer. This is a uh, common mount uh, filter choke. We've got a fuse. CNY17, those uh, those are uh, optocouplers. LM244J. Might be a voltage regulator of some sort. Nice enclosure on that, I see. And we've got LM2575T. A voltage uh, switch mode. Uh, switch mode voltage regulator and uh, we've got a classic uh, 7805 and we also have something that looks like a relay right here at least it's marked as uh, K2 probably K1 and um, DC 12 volts uh, items um, 30, 380 volts uh, that must be a relay that's loveliness. Just loveliness. Look at this connector, gold plated and all that stuff. Thing of beauty. Joy forever. So, nothing stops me from discombobulating this box even further. should be the right tool for the job. Those connectors were attached uh, using slotted uh, boards and and the rails are attached uh, with Philips boards. Look at that, M2 and a half, loveliness. I guess that um, the other boards will be M3. By the way, this is not a connector. There's, uh, there's also another one on the other side. It's not a connector, it's just... Uh, 
it's uh, it's just a mechanical uh, part uh, for coding the boards like we've got uh, we've got uh, some protruding parts and it prevents uh, inserting the board in the um, wrong slot very clever if you have uh, a lot of boards uh, that uh, use the same uh, kind of uh, connector adding those uh, coding blocks uh, especially if uh, if you're dealing with uh, high voltages uh, and uh, and some other dangerous stuff this is the way this, this is the way Hmm, I guess that um, the, the screw on the rails, they were not M3. Also useful stuff. Taking this apart... Uh, well, give me some useful parts for my projects. There's also a C bracket right here that goes into the slot on, on the rail on the opposite side. So this, um, this doesn't uh, bend in any direction because that would uh, put uh, unnecessary stress on the board and on the connector. It's all engineered for reliability and I absolutely love that it's engineered for reliability. None of that cutting corners rubbish. Cost no object. Uh, lovely stuff indeed. Now if I can grab a short screwdriver. Luckily, had one kicking around in the drawer under my bench and taking it apart some further M4 stainless steel thing of beauty, joy forever There's, uh, there's also one connector right here. And if I am correct, I could now take the metal frame away. There's also a spade connector for the ground. So this is the naked metal frame. I wonder what I could do with it. It will probably be used in one of my projects. Who knows what it will be? It might be a Nixie clock, a power supply, an amplifier, whatever. Or some yet another Karitek Electronics test gear. So, taking it apart some further. In order to remove the main switch, I'm gonna remove the handle. And 
out this uh, part. And again, oh, look at this. Someone screwed it too tight. Then the bolt uh, was either screwed uh, before this was fit uh, on top of it, or it was screwed too tight. Tighter than ever Granger's laces. Again, conical head stainless steel M4. might have been done on purpose it was not uh, accidentally screwed in too tight and uh, why I'm saying this it's because I can see and you will see it soon a countersunk hole A single countersunk hole. I will not be taking apart the switch because uh, my friend Alana wants to have it back. She gave it, uh, she gave me the device. Uh, saying that uh, she wants some parts from it and I will be happy to give uh, those parts back to her keeping some others uh, for me there was uh, something like a aftermarket bypass uh, done on, uh, on the switch with those uh, with those uh, pretty hard uh, wiring style, um, British wiring style uh, stranded wires. So, let's take a look at the switch. Take a look at the switch. This is this is how I should put it back together. For some reason. It doesn't want to cooperate, but I know the reason now. There is also an adapter for the axle. It can really go on the axle in one single direction. So we've got uh, two pairs uh, of contacts on uh, every every level, every every packet. And let's reverse engineer the function on on this switch. Hmm. 
Uh, that's... That's interesting. this way yes indeed so in the in the second position I've got uh, one and two I've got uh, contact between one and two and in the first position I've got no contact between one and two but I've got contact between uh, three and four so I guess that uh, this is one contact another 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 for the position uh, one And this would be in, this would be in the contact for position number two. Eh, that's very straightforward and very useful. And then we've got a lovely potentiometer for the dimmer. In order to take this apart. I will probably need a thin uh, screwdriver. Lift the lid from the knob. Unscrew the screw. Lovely old style. Lovely old style knob. Just like those I know from test gear. Look at that thing of beauty. I know those from uh, test gear, I know those from mixers, all that kind of stuff. And then there's the nut. And number 10 is the one. So this potentiometer is draloric, 10k linear, just look at that, uh, let me get a close up on this one, wow. This is just uh, pure loveliness. Hermetically sealed. And again, like I said, it's engineered for reliability. Let's cut those zip ties to take those cable bundles apart and see what goes where. Probably the mains wiring.
so those wires go to the fuses on one side what's uh, pretty interesting there is that those fuses go through the switches and there is uh, there's one fuse on uh, every every line of um, of the of the lights of the of the device it's uh, it's both on uh, on the positive and on the negative uh, side and there are two common rails connecting those switches uh, on the incoming side those rails uh, go to the thicker black wires that went to the main or emergency switch and this is one group of uh, of switches and this group is separate powered with a uh, separate pair of wires also a nice feature and uh, like we could uh, expect from uh, any example of good electrical engineering we've got ferrules on the, on the ends of the stranded wires at least that's how we are supposed to do it in Europe some more zip ties to cut and if we take a closer look some of those LEDs go to the switches others will go to the board like this is the board connector not all of those contacts are populated this was for the power board this was for the control board And there is also a mysterious uh, module and I think I know what it is because we've got some ribbon cable going to a block of holes and I think by the way those holes are marked A, B, C, D towards uh, Q and I think what it is because there are some uh, soldering points around this I think that this is uh, actually a block uh, of uh, current transformers pretty clever gotta admit it, it's pretty clever so some of those blocks power going out from them to the current transformer and then coming back those switches they are likely dpdt double throw double throw and there is a lot of things to take apart 
This switch is clearly different than all others. It's a different style, which means that it might have been replaced um, when the original one failed. Or maybe it was a design, uh, then the design might have uh, called for the switch that uh, had more contacts or something like that. And let me see if I can take this thing apart. How do I... how do I remove it? This is one part. There is no visible latch or something here. So, Carrie. Roll for intelligence and see if if this can be non-destructively discombobulated. I would absolutely love to reuse this switch in some of my projects. And by the way, this has been glued together with uh, cyanoacrylate. the port side lighting has been glued together with cyanoacrylate maybe it's just a matter of lifting a latch here with a spudger Looks like that. Looks like that. There might be another. It is now discombobulated. Hopefully, non destructively, recombobulated. So, ah, look at the soldering quality. This is not nice. Not fully reflowed. I expected better. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. I don't even, I don't even uh, solder that sloppily in my quick and dirty projects. This one is a lot better. This is not very elegant, but it might be a sign of modification. Also pretty inelegant. The way I see this switch, it's double pole, double throw with an additional signal light. The signal light probably 
24 volts or 12 volts. Almost there. I try to be quick with desoldering because I could damage that plastic. I don't want that. And the switch has been liberated from its harness of wires. And so uh, let's check out the markings of the switch. AC15 2 amps 250 volts, DC15 0.15 amps 125 volts. Thermal current, I guess, uh, 5 amps and insulation voltage 320 volts according to the EN slash IEC 16947-5-1 standards. And then the manufacturer is probably EAO. This is a lamp max 60 volts. Doesn't say uh, all that much uh, 300 volts AC SD to 50 volts AC 5 amps. Uh, so it probably has a light bulb in it. And I really should get better at taking this thing apart. Just lifting this uh, should be enough. So there is also a contact right here. That goes to the light bulb. And there is a push rod activating the contacts inside the switch the push rod uh, just uh, all it does is uh, activating this assembly and the contact assembly is momentary it doesn't have uh, two stable positions the stable, what makes it stable are what makes it monostable or bistable is actually the head. And uh, according to my hypothesis, the light bulb is right here. I will need a piece of uh, plastic tube to take it out of there.
conveniently enough, I got a lot of compressed air tubing. But it is a little bit too thin. So I would have to devise some better way of doing it. Let me see if one of those tubes will be enough. And by the way, I think that this might be a bayonet light bulb. doing it a little bit different. Using some protection on those forceps. Not to let metal touch the glass. Something moved down here. But it might just... be... I might just be wrong. Okay, let's see... 74 ohms for a small light bulb like this. I think that if I connect it to something like 5 volts, then it should be pretty okay. Or I might try the 9 volt battery. it still has any battery functionality. 8 point something. So the voltage is a little bit too low. Looks like I will need a power supply. It still fills me with determination. Okay, got the power supply. And it looks like I'm gonna be successful. Mm, 
We have lights! Come on, contact! Contact! We have lights! And let's put the... Let's put the key in it. Bird side, go for launch. Ah, uh, let me turn it off. By the way, the, the new camera has a ring light. That I just turned off to show you. And I think it looks pretty nice. And watch your eyes, the light is now coming back. Another type of those switches. It's pretty straightforward to disassemble. This one is just a momentary push button. And it sits pretty tight. Taking it out... Uh, Taking it out might be a little bit tricky. Come on! Those uh, will be... Those will be harder than that one. How do I do it? And there's also a light uh, going through the switch. through the switch, but I'm not seeing the light, probably because uh, there might not be a light bulb put into this. How do I take this thing apart? So in order... Yes, there is no light bulb in it. I 
wonder if I can take this thing out of it. No, it doesn't plug in. Or maybe... Maybe I should... Heat this thing up again. It's like, don't be afraid to break it apart in the name of science! In the name of science, I order you to come apart! This is getting on my nerves. I can see that there is one thing that goes into this part. And there is one thing that goes on to this part. But what holds the switch? I don't care that I'm gonna destroy it. The only thing I care about now is to know how it is built. So. I just broke the contact going to the light bulb. And I am about to break another. But one thought just crossed my mind. That I might be doing it all for nothing. Yeah, and the other light bulb switch. So there's uh, another push rod that activates the contacts. Oh, look at, look at how precise this is. One contact and then the end block. So this would be a different type of switch. But uh, one thing, one thought uh, crossed my mind. What if I desolder those switches completely? And try to unscrew them without separating the parts.
that. Look at that. It goes right through. It goes right through. And it's not even full thread. It has four threaded parts. So in order to assemble this thing, I can put it through the slots and then screw it on. And there's just some LEDs and uh, also some fuses. Nothing too interesting. So, let's get back to my desk for a moment. So, that would be an interesting device to take apart. I will disassemble the rest of it uh, in the meantime, because this is going to take a lot of time. And again, I hope I learned something. Bye for now. See you next time.